Well, thank you for sticking around with us through the break, ladies and gentlemen. You've been here. You know that we're tied up 1-1 in this series. Boston taking the last game. Vermont showing strong in the first one. Now all coming down to this. Backs are against the wall. Players are actually in lobby ready to run down the draft here as we do throw that one in. And it's a side switch yet again. Boston back to old blue. Yeah, and uh, they're probably, probably looking to upset that order. I uh, I can't imagine that they'd want to lose this one out, so maybe bring some of those reserved strats to the forefront. Now would be the time, because after all, season is winding to a close. All of the, you know, somewhat more experimental drafts should have been ironed out. They need to have their best stuff ready to go. It's game number three for both of these teams for their undefeated record to either continue or be broken. UVM. They don't like the Leona. They're not giving him a regard again. I like both of these changes, Adaptive bands, but yeah. I don't <laughs> like the fact that they still don't play Alistair. I really don't like that. If they can play Alistair here, oh, if they, you know, they didn't ban it. Yeah, that's tricky. Well, we'll see whether or not that one does get snatched up here for themselves, actually. Is... It, it, again, for Boston, that would be the ideal pick, right? You know that the Vermont doesn't play it. You know that you have the stronger support when you get that. Um, but maybe they just don't want to pick it. They know Vermont doesn't play it. Why pick it? There's no point, right? Okay, yeah, I mean, if it's a gentleman's agreement just not to run the Alistair in the game, hey, no one to put the cow in a pen this time around, but Boston is going to stick to what's working for them, and that's going to be the Amumu, going to take away, actually, the best top lane prospect of UVM, and force them in to something else other than the style. So the the whole top lane as the pro draft does kind of give that away. Curious to see how that does transpire. And Anivia Where is the uh, Trundle well, selected? Trundle if you and Anivia were the last two picks for. Uh, so for Trundle UVM. counterpick into Scion. Um, I have a lot of problems with that. The main problem is you Scion's not tank that builds me. a ton, a ton of resistances. Like he builds some, but the other thing is he just has so much raw health. Trundle doesn't bully him all that easily. You know he doesn't have the greatest early game. Scion has a great one. He doesn't have a fantastic mid game without, you know, excess amounts of just straight stats. Scion doesn't build anything besides just raw health for a little bit. So, in that sense, not really a huge fan of the Trundle pick. Amumu is not super tanky either. Neither one of these. It's like Trundle against Sedge? Yes, please. Sign me up every day of the week. That's not Sedgewani, though. Not the same sort of thing. And the Rakan pick here is super important. I think Rakan. Um, probably selected first rotation. If, yeah. Zion Rakan actually were were second. Ro Zion was the first pick, and then Zion Rakan selected immediately wow. thereafter. So they saved. Okay, so second rotation. They were they were first set. Yes. First, ro first rotation, second pick. Right. Yes. 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 Okay. okay. Gotcha. Um, so that's pretty interesting because Zion Rakan, knowing that the enemy team hasn't played Alistair, hasn't opted into it on blue side, they never selected it. It's a dare. <laughs> Do you play it, Vermont? Pick it. I dare you. Challenge me. Win the lane. Beat it. Because Alistair is the best Rakan counter in the game. Mm. Literally. There's nothing better than an Alistair into the Rakan. The fact that they can't play it means that this is a dare. They've gone for it. No response to the dare whatsoever. They went back to the Braum Varus. That's good. They get more space for their Varus. I really like that. The Anivia is great for zoning. Even more space there with the wall. These are all fantastic adaptations. Except for the fact where they seem to have lost. Well, we'll see how they do transpire here as we are getting in to the last game of this best of three series. They have... One team's got to take it, right? At this point? Yeah. So, we'll see who it is. Is it Vermont? Is it Boston? I'm, we'll I'm leaning Boston. Through. I think their draft is absolutely fantastic. I love the Scion pick here. I think the Amumu is on the up and up. It's a great jungler to have. The Ari, not as prevalent, especially in Comet form. We'd much rather see Glacial, I think. But even given that, I like Ari into Anivia. It's not a great pick. It's not a terrible pick. It's an even lane. But Ari has the mobility to help her jungler win the rest of the map. I think that's what's going to change things, right? 
you can't really kill a Nivea. Nivea can't really kill you. Doesn't matter. Affect the jungle. Roam with your jungler. Win the 2v2s in the jungle for him. Get him ahead, and he will provide for you. Bottom lane, it's Zyra Khan. That's the best pick you could have gotten here. They don't play the Alistair. It's not selective. That's just a winning lane so far in and out that I like Boston's draft a lot more. That's not to say there haven't been good adaptations for Vermont, but you cannot not play the Alistair. That has to be in your wheelhouse. We'll see if it punishes them, right? If they can win without the Alistair, if they can prove me wrong, I'd love to see it because if that is the case, Alistair might not be necessary at the top of the throne of the support leaderboard. Love to see it. We'll see if they can bring it. Yeah, I think Pancreas Man really... He's not bad at Braum. Well, no, he's no, only no, played Braum, any stretch right? of imagination. So that's the tricky part of it, is that he's not gone on to another support in this entire series. So we have no idea the depths of his support chart. So, you know, this could be a player that really only locks down to it. It's not like, you know, the, the, keep in mind, these are college players. They don't have the, the run that a lot of pro teams do of, you know, I have all day, every day to practice all these different champs and... You know, it's almost inexcusable for a pro not to know every support and be able to pick it situationally. It's not exactly the case, but hang on a second. Sphere already having to flash out, but he's flashed back in on with the ignite down on him. As both summoners do go down for the Varus, the AD of Vermont. It's not a good position to find yourself in so early on that Varus because it signals now that just a bandage toss from Uncle Tui can dramatically change the... the pace of this lane yeah and i think changing the pace would be extremely important right uh after all um it's been a little back and forth in lane you know there's been some winning lanes there's been some losing lanes having a winning lane here always going to be an advantage and they're not that easy to come by so if you can change the tempo like that if you can you know alter it make the deal make the win fantastic to see of course everybody knows that but has to be said that winning lanes are a very good thing. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, probably a controversial and brave opinion, but I can't say you're wrong. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, back in the day, it was like, okay, CLG EU drafts four losing lanes, including jungle. That happened. They still win. Doesn't matter. In the current meta, in the current year, um, I hate using the word current year, but it <laughs> is true. Okay, John Oliver. 2018 League of Legends has been all about run at you compositions, strong solo laners and winning lanes. That's it, that's all it's been about. So to not have a winning lane is tragic, and especially in the current meta, just because of how the game is. You know, you need to have that aggression, you need to have that advantage. Otherwise things get really hard and uh, you feel well, With that, only just four minutes into this game, but the pressure, the pacing, all of the attitude seems to be Boston Ooh, good a relatively, you know, confident run of things as they are setting themselves up for what they're looking to be their game closer. They do have the momentum, and that seems to me to be building a certain a certain amount of credence to the way that they're playing this particular composition. You mentioned that you like their composition a little bit better. Well, it's doing okay in the lanes, especially bot lane where they're getting themselves a CS advantage, almost even in the mid lane and just a splash in their favor on the top side. It's been tending to swing back and forth as we've seen it, all things considered here. No huge surprises that the first blood hasn't come down in the first few minutes. That's, you know, pretty par for the course, but the big change up variable there is the fact that the aggression is so much more on the nose here as they want to find the kill number one right in onto this Anivia egg. They're going to get it. First blood locking down is Jennifer Parker there. Taken out and away. No chance of coming out of that one with the kill. Does give himself up. Flash was still there. Teleport was still there. Didn't try to get out in any, you know, creative kind of way. Just said, hey, I know this one's happening. I'm going to give up the first blood. Not ideal that it goes over to Lightning Kirby for them. No. I think that, uh... Yeah, I mean... The Ari was going to pressure anyway. The fact that Nivi went down and died through Egg super super tragic but it's partial overextension it's also a good roam from the jungler knowing the timings poppy was there right poppy's there and can't even do anything about it which is kind of the problem you know sometimes that just happens but we see exactly why the trundle doesn't counter scion right now right mm. scion has more ad doesn't have a bunch of resistances 
he just wins off of raw stats against so many of these bruisers because of his early back he is burning the minion wave as well so he's getting more counter push against the trundle trundle needs a tiamat or something similar in order to get that count we'll see itemization whether or not he can get there before this game gets a little out Ooh. of hand as slubby there wants to get it on the spear it's a good brom shield but look at that is it good Auto enough attacks. the spear's in some trouble and support wins bot punch of they, auto attacks yeah they turned their focus a little too much on a support wins bot or uh, or sl slubby there uh, they kind of split the brown focus of the passive and the, then their actual damage which went onto the ad and it just ended up not being you know the right recipe they needed for a kill there so good pickup secondary from boston there's uh, gonna go over to slubby there on the support so you know not a game ender, not a lane devastation, but you still don't want that early death on the sphere being Varus and now the CS advantage really in a position to get get where it could build up for support with spot here. Yeah, and uh we've seen him get a CS advantage in I think all three of the games so far. Actually no, he lost the Lucian game. Hmm. So his most aggressive AD he actually lost on. But the rest of them he seemed to be okay at. So in that sense I think it's not the worst thing in the world, right? He's got himself a lead. The Zaya is very good at converting those into success. He has an ultimate that allows you to stay safe. I mean, if you're going to pile gold onto anybody, it is one of the safest AD carries in the game because of that really, really broken ult, right? With that being said, it's still only like one assist. You know, it's really not that far ahead. He doesn't have a huge amount of gold. He's not just going to be winning the lane outright. It's like 5 CS. So, need to see a little bit more of a push. Maybe another kill coming out with the Rakan combo. But they need something more in order to make that happen. We'll see if they can't find that more. As mm -hmm. Another one is running down. They want to get in onto this one. Support wins bot is there. The Lovers duo just spitting out the damage. And I like that they feel the need not to overcommit on this particular run of things. So, should be okay there. I actually thought they should have, right? That was the time to flash in. That's the time to kill off the Varus. Or at the very least, burn both of his summoners for your flash. Seems very good to me because he's been having a super hard time dealing with the Rakan combos, even with his summoners up. So if you were to get those down, right, and he doesn't have anything else left, he's just going to die the next time you combo around. So sometimes it's worth pressuring those aggressive things. And I think it really would have been for Boston there because they have the Zyra Khan lane and that is so dependent on getting the early advantage with the Zyra and Rakan to conclude to a win. Poppy's here though. Yeah, they want to get in a little bit further here. This is careful territory. Slubby is getting out and look at the turnaround as they spit back the damage, but they go right back into Iraqi mm. and that's some disrespect on their part. They had the damage, they got excited for it, but punished at the end of the day is the worst part of it all. So having to back off, tuck tail between legs. Not ideal for Boston. Ari here. They want the dive now. This is their chance at vengeance. And yeah, Ari on the sidelines. It's a land. great setup. Slubby's in trouble. And just like that, Amumu is there to seal the deal. And they will lock down another two kills unanswered at this point. Four to zero. Playing a dangerous game behind the towers of Vermont, but getting them all the same. This is looking good for Boston here. Yeah, they got a great roam off there where you think, okay. They went way too aggressive. They thought they had it. They didn't have it. But then you just see Vermont stick around for forever. You know, they're mm -hmm. sticking around for a year and a half. And by that time, they already have jungle. They already have their support on opposite sides of the map that both converged and met to a terrible fate for the side of Vermont, right? Their bot lane goes down. They lose a bunch of gold. They lose power as well. Not what you want to be seeing after defending so excellently against that super aggressive Zaya ult, right? You think... Everything's going fine at that point, but then they're the ones that get over aggressive, over greedy. They stay, they die for it. The gold is lost. It's usually kind of gold how lead, that happens with players is they get out of a sticky situation, and that's yeah. the immediate moment that their guard is down, right? And so, pinning that one up and taking advantage of it, something that we got a Pat Bastin on the back for there. They did okay to come out with that one. Four and zero control of this game to the tune of about two and a half K. Now it's only a matter of whether or not they can continue to push this one out because we saw them have a little bit of trouble finding the ideal pressures in the last game and really taking their time with it. Gotta have to question whether or not this is the case or if the likes of an Ari 
and and uh, the Rakan there to get behind towers are going to make this a little bit more aggressive. And you got to think, you know, even though they took some time, oh, good charm lands Ooh, onto this. Yeah. Sidestep the stun though. It, it is stunned up, yeah. It's not probably gonna end up in a kill here, I believe. Ooh. Misses the Q redirect. I think that was pretty harsh. Yikes, wants to go with the ultimate. That is the egg, and combo's down, but here's some. Doesn't minions. have enough damage yeah. instantly kill. Not really gonna come out with the with the big kill on this one, barring some kind of crazy flash combo in there, but still to pop the passive, that's always a great feeling for an Ari there. The fox comes out over the bird this time. Much like in real life. Actually, you know. Most birds of prey, some of the, their only natural predators are foxes. Yeah, well, that tends to be the case, right? When you, uh, when you're something that swoops down and picks off prey, uh, foxes are relatively smart um, for that kind of a. I guess they're a canine, right? But I don't actually, no, I couldn't tell you. I think they're a canine, probably. Oh, I think Scion's coming in for this one. Not going to find exactly what he needs to. Oh, it's pretty close. Yeah, that's actually going to get him in range for the bandage shots. That's going to get where they need to, but Rocky's found two against the wall. Mumu doesn't stand a chance. And Good Uncle Tui. So far. Yeah, he's not invited over for Thanksgiving this time around. He'll be sent back down into the grave there. Is no chance of that one. So it's a point back on the board for the boys of Vermont this time around. And but a single point. Yeah, just a point. No, let's not get carried away. Don't call to come back, but they're doing okay. Should get that. They'll, they'll be happy enough with it. 12 minutes in. Still about 2.5k gold separated. Game's not over by any stretch, no, no. right? So. Not by any stretch, right? 4k gold is not a game ending. But when the gold is distributed pretty well, when the R is super ahead, when you've got to worry about the fact that your AD is going to get one shot and low mobility and their enemy mid is high mobility... And your, both of your carries is actually your two threats. Super, super static champions against an Ari and a Rakan, right? Right. Things are going to be extremely messy. So in that sense, they do have to worry quite a bit. But at the very least, they have terrain generation stop the Scion engage. Hmm. So they won't get triple CC. Right. But that's right. They're still going to get double CC. The Amumu might get in. That could be the third set. And... If that happens, if the Amumu gets in, all bets are off. It's it's Fox in the hen house all over again. He takes down the non-birds of prey much more easily, of course, and they're going to be completely enough. We'll see but what... <laughs> big but, yeah, Vermont has a lot of space, right? They've got the Nivea space. They've got the space created by the Brom, by the Poppy. The dashes aren't going to be instantly working because of the Poppy zoning tools. Laying in wait is this Zaya. We'll see if they notice. Oh, they're not going to notice anything except the big fat fist in their face as the spear is running out of this one. Feeling a little dazed and confused. Tries to get the answer back, but just not really anything for him here in particular. So, his kill taken out and away. Six to one now. The credit over to Boston is they're building themselves up a more impressive run around this time even than the last game. Fifteen minutes still as the slow play. This early game aversion that we've seen out of these guys continues to be the story of their run, but a dragon to boot here would be a nice little pickup for them. It's a mountain drake. That's going to help with their, you know, siege anxiety that we saw in the last game. Well, hey, you don't worry about the towers as much when you can just knock them down with the help of a little dragon dust. So, I feel like they'll be happy enough to take that one into consideration as they try to take wow. the rocky out of things, but the aggression not going to work if the damage toss is just countered right back out. Yeah, but I was super surprised the Rakan W wasn't actually stopped by Poppy, so with that, the turret's going to take some damage, and it's looking for another charge onto another Tier 2. I think they get it here. Yeah, that's going to feel really good for themselves as they do lock it down. Rocky not trying his damage to keep that one out. Just make sure. They kill the Rift Hero when it gets to the tower, and well, that's an important part of this process as well. Trundle, Trundle's still splitting. Yeah, splitting in the top side. Does get the tower to his credit there. I'm going to feel good about that one, so... Only 15 minutes in, but some signs of life coming back around now from the boys in Vermont. They're remembering, hey, look, you know, we are the team that won this first game. We are a team that, you know, really made Boston look like they didn't know what they were doing. We can be that team again. We're only down a handful of gold here. And the split push, well, that's, that's, a, that's a drop in the bucket, right? Yeah, it's part and I, I wonder, right? Game number one looked like 
the reason Vermont won was because they got an early game lead to the bottom lane, right? So why continue to draft compositions that don't allow you to do that, right? You keep drafting the Varus Braum. You keep drafting these safe supports instead of aggressive. So you, yeah, you know, you let them have the Leona. Take the Braum again. It feels like that time, that energy elsewhere in the map would be better spent bottom lane, right? Their big success came when they had a successful, you know, early game in the bottom side. They could rely on their AD. He got ahead, enough to shred the tanks. And then they just walked through people with their very, very strong front line. Without the back line being beefy, though, it doesn't matter how big of a front line you bring. And it looks like they're going to get a kill onto this roaming trundle. Yeah, they definitely want to find it. The lover's lane can usually take away just about anyone in a 2v1 unless you are just... He's just dancing. Dead, yeah, to absolute oblivion. It's, it's really flash. hard to keep track on him, but Pyrocryptic wants it. The minions, part of this as well, and they haven't been able to separate. Slubby ran away from it, and this is actually tricky now where Rocky will force the ultimate out. Yeah, they didn't want to have to use it, but they gladly Ash. will if it means they get out okay. Where Rocky now... Now on to Zingbit to try to get in for this one, but look at this. There is a fox oh. laying in wait. The charm read like a book. Maybe try to find the kill. It's a knockout, actually. Is Lightning Kirby on a rampage now going in for Jim for Sparker here? Just wants to get a little bit more. And the Oh, oh the charm. fadeaway charm. Beautiful play. Love to see it. This egg is not gonna hatch. It is taken out and away and Anivia. Lockdown. That one goes to the credit of Zingbit on the side. On Lightning Kirby, really made the, the the position that you know had it. But at the end of the day, yeah, it was it was good. And the Kirby. angle the Anivia was at meant that hitting the blast cone didn't get her fast enough away from the Ari charm. If she was at a bit more of a opposite angle from the Ari, right, a little bit more, she gets out of range. But because of that, she doesn't. She gets dropped into egg, brought down. Flash over the wall from Sai and secure the kill. Bunch of summoners burned, but the lead that was kind of small is now becoming not so insignificant side of Boston, and they are looking to try and close out this series in game number three. The Baron, soon to be in consideration, and once it is on the table, I think Boston are going to have zero trouble pulling the trigger. They have shown themselves to be able to absolutely win fights so far, and this is the earliest at 18 minutes that we've seen either of these two teams play aggressively to say the Yeah, I would I would say that what we've seen out of these teams so far, I mean, it'd be hard pressed to call it at least traditional aggression, right? So they've had aggressive moments, but by and large not been something that locks in as just raw constant aggression that you think about when you think of the way people pay uh, play, you know, fast paced in your face League of Legends. That's not been this. 9 to 1, 19 minutes on the board or so. You mentioned Baron coming up. It's something that both teams are familiar with, and I think Boston, definitely a large part of their win condition as they're looking at this game and kind of taking stock of the map. Obviously, they can do without it, but when it came to that last game, it was really Baron that tipped the scales, made things just feel so much better for them, and the way that they played around that objective, not even the objective itself, but just their positioning, their preparation, and the advantages that it created for them just in consideration gave them so much of that initial priority there. So moving forward, they want to get behind this tower. They want to find the kill where Rocky gets in. There's the ultimate down, but it just issues some minions to get right on out. And they'll come right back in. Slow chip. Yeah, just this tower still getting dinked a bit by bit by bit. And... That's all you can ask for. The Anivia wave clear not coming through. The charms there. Stand behind Braum. They turn this into an engage. They want it, but that's a Glacial Fissure down. They're going to get behind him just now after they wait and bait. There's Uncle Chewie on the back line. Beautiful play as they are just falling down like crazy. Pyrocryptic, the last one alive, trying to get out of this one, but there's just nowhere to go as they only lose the support. And Boston University, an ace at 20 minutes. That's going to be inhibitor for sure. They're going to have to back off after this. They have a guaranteed Baron to boot. The sooner they back, the better. Because it allows them to get the resets, it allows them to get the timing, and then beat their opposition to Baron while still getting that, then the Infernal Dragon, and then even more to boot. Actually, it might not be an Infernal. I think it is an Ocean Dragon. It's a little bit hard to see. No, I'm oh, sorry. That's a Mountain Drake. So It's a Mountain Drake. Yes. Okay. Well, whatever the Drake might be, Baron on the table, extremely important. 
soon as they get that, the game should be over. Because as we saw from that execution last fight, Boston know how to pull this composition off. You get the small engage from the Scion, bait them forwards. Once they cluster, Rakan hits them, and then the Amumu walks in for the finisher. It's so much CC, and there's nothing that can be done about it besides to be further back, right? The spacing that we talked about, sitting in a side lane, they don't have the advantage of being able to front to back. Their composition from the side of Vermont, very, very strong if they are come out from one direction. There were multiple directions, multiple threats, multiple CC, and they got completely punished by it. Yeah, just caught out in a way that they shouldn't have, have really been in that position it, in the first place, getting mixed up with that kind of kind of stuff compositionally. So tricky to play around now when you found this. This is okay. You've made your bed now. You got to lie in it now. You have to deal with this issue that's been created on the table here. So two mountain drakes would just shred through that bear. Not that they would need any help shredding through the bear. With the current amount of damage they have, I mean, just look at that Ari itemization. Just look at that Zaya itemization. They're both in just prime condition to make their opponent's lives just... And they're just baiting at this point, right? right? Super's going in. They can wait as long as they need to. But if nobody comes soon, right? Next 10 seconds, they should really just pull the trigger, go for the Baron. You've seen so many members inside that base that you probably know they're not actually going to walk out. Mm. Yeah. I think that's the right until they call. do yeah well at the exact right time here you go well this one works out for them they got the Ari standing guard that charm is such a huge threat that they can't ignore it for too long here so we'll be right over the wall we'll be trying to get in a little bit more on this one the Baron is gone down there is the glacial fissure but pancreas man is gone right out of this one and it's another one coming down the resurrection not going to be the case it's a double kill right now for the likes of our friends in Boston and, this, and that's going to be the end of the yeah, game. I mean, they've got closing it out. 20 seconds on three members, two to defend against the onslaught of Boston. Hmm. It's tough. I think that this one's gone down right and away. It looks like Boston just coming right on through. Nothing that Pyrocryptic can do here for himself to keep this one locked down. So the tower is going to fall. It's 18 kills on the board right now. Won't pad out another just yet as the game's going to go down. They will take the gracious win in 23 minutes. Our shortest of the evening as it is finally going to be Boston coming back in this series they were down in the first game UVM took it dramatically but just like that Boston does claw it back clutch it from the, you know the, the, the fell grasp of defeat and come back to find themselves the winter uh, the winners of this particular matchup here and great play, great adaptation to just stay alive in the series. I really like what I saw from Boston here. Yeah, and uh, I think it was an example of them being a bit more on the meta read, right? Mm -hmm. They had a better meta composition. It was a little bit more forward thinking, not so old fashioned. That's what got them the win, right? right? It's all about the aggressive multiple CC comps. And especially in solo queue, picking up those very useful picks, bringing them back, bringing them to bear. Super, super important. So, in that sense, really like what they've done. Whether or not the Amumu continues to stick around, still think it's a very potent pick. And, like to congratulate them after a very harsh game one loss, right? Where they just seem to do everything wrong, to have the mental force to get back in there. So, actually, what's interesting about this, too, considering the way the post game is going to kind of shake out, break down here, both of these teams were coming into this game undefeated, right? So. This is going to push Vermont now to a 4-1 and one record. Boston, they were a, 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 an unplayed game behind due to some scheduling, uh, you know, uh, shakeups there. But now they're 4-0. and oh. Boston keeping their undefeated streak alive. Have lost a game at least, but not a series yet. And so staying alive in this JV has got to feel good for them. We, we, you know, we talked... Vermont's only fielding one JV team. All their eggs are in this basket. So for a loss like that to come at this point in the season, you got to start to get a little nervous, and, and I'm sure this is going to put the Vermont guys back to the drawing board in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think the drawing board has got to come out sooner rather than later. Take a look at that solo queue, the way the Koreans are playing. Always super important, despite their last world championship. I still yeah. think it matters a lot. <laughs> of course, of course, it certainly does well with that ladies and gentlemen we are going to extend a thank you to our teams boston university with the congratulations for the victory and of course a thank you to vermont for being on stream and making the time to uh you know provide all of this entertainment for 
for us here at home. My name is Kyle Corvus Grubb and joined by Jeff Zeta Beta Schner. Had the pleasure of uh, casting League with him all season long and well, that's not changing anytime soon. We do have more League of Legends action coming your way. It's going to be Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Same place as well, right here on Sea Star League 2. I have a varsity matchup coming up then, and then we will cool things off as we let things move into the Thanksgiving timeline and be back again the Monday after the holiday. So with that, we're going to be signing off for the night. We hope to see you a little later on, and until then, you all be well. Thanks. Say goodbye.